Hey guys, welcome to the Doula Diaries. I'm Heidi. I'm the host of the Birth Story Podcast, which drops birth story episodes and expert interviews every Thursday. I'm also the author of the Birth Story Pregnancy Guidebook and Journal. It is everything, 529 pages of everything that you need to know to prepare for your birth. You can get that at birthstory.com. And I am also the content creator for Birth Story Academy, where you go for online learning from a virtual doula. You can also get into my private Facebook community through Birth Story Academy. And here on Tuesdays is where we meet for doula diaries. So welcome. Before we get started, I would love to have you guys in Birth Story Academy. It is premier childbirth education for your hospital birth, no matter what the birth looks like that you're planning. So medicated, unmedicated, a wait and see attitude, a belly birth, an induction, there is a module for all of it. And I have a blank name tag at your seat waiting to put your name on it. And the best part about Birth Story Academy is that I get to be your virtual doula. You go into my private Facebook group where I interact with you every single week and cheer you on as you plan and prepare for the birth that you want, no matter what that looks like. So I hope you will go to birthstory.com and enroll in Birth Story Academy today. Hey guys, happy Tuesday. On 2-22-22. What an amazing palindrome, really. I guess this whole week is palindromes. But I am speaking to you today about, I don't know, maybe being a death doula. That might be what I title this episode. And I'm not going to be able to edit the episode because my abuela passed away. And there's grief. And so I really don't want to waste time today editing a podcast episode. So hopefully you guys will give me some grace that I'm just going to publish this as is. But something profound happened this weekend as I was holding my abuela as she was passing away. Now I'm 43 years old. All of my grandparents have passed on except for one step-grandmother, Emily. She's wonderful and she's still with us. But my step-grandfather and both sets of grandparents from my mother and father have passed on a long time ago. And so my abuela is my sister, Samantha, her husband, Francisco, To my kids, he's Tio Francisco. It's his mother. So she has become the matriarch of the family over the last 20, 25 years. And um, today, this morning, on 222, she left this world. Now, what in the world does this have to do with birth? I didn't think anything until I held my abuela. And so I just wanted to share about this today because I know that there are death doulas and I've never talked to one. And I thought I would never do that. I am terrified of death and I love birth. And in this amazing twist of life, just as soon as I found out my abuela had passed over, and that she was greeted in heaven by God, two of my doula clients went into labor, just reminding me about the cycle of life and death. And so I would like to share with that. See how I'm not editing? I would like to share that with you today. So on Saturday morning, I felt like it was a race against time. We found out that my abuela, who is turning, would be turning 91 in March and has been in a nursing home for the last couple of years. She's from Colombia, South America, 
um, over the last year or so, she had sort of lost her English too and some of her faculties, but the love was still there and present. And um, I was alerted that, you know, she was going to pass soon. And so it felt like the longest drive of my life from Charlotte, North Carolina to Asheville, North Carolina, up into the mountains. And it's about two hours. But my sister and I made the drive early in the morning and we got there. And um, oh, what a beautiful gift. She, her eyes were still open. She couldn't speak and she couldn't swallow. And she was so frail. I could feel her pacemaker. I mean, she probably weighed 85 pounds at the end. And I could just feel her little pacemaker flickering under my hand. And I just immediately just held her and grabbed her and stroked her hair and kissed her. We sang to her and we just loved on her. But what was life-changing, altering moment to me as a birth doula is my abuela turned to me as I held her face and I talked to her about becoming a mother because I knew she couldn't speak back. And I know a lot of times right before we pass, we sort of lose our recent memories, but I knew she would remember her young one. So I talked to her about being a young girl in Colombia and falling in love and becoming a mother for the first time. And while she was soon to pass, she died within 48 hours this morning. But while she was soon to pass, when I talked to her about her firstborn, whose name is also Heidi, but her firstborn Heidi, she locked eyes with me and she, it was like she remembered her purpose, right? To, and I did the dates. So we talked about the dates and since her primary language is Spanish, I was speaking to her in Spanish. So we talked about when Heidi was born, and then we talked about when her next son, Victor, was born, and then we talked about when her next son, Francisco, was born, and these three beautiful children, right, one daughter and two sons, and the love of her life, Ignacio, who had passed many, 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 many years ago, and she locked eyes with me. She was letting go in front of me. She was transitioning from this earth into heaven. That's our belief system. It's okay if that's not yours. And as she turned her head, when I walked in the room and I held her face and I locked eyes with her, I thought, I know this look. I've seen it a thousand times. And it was really hard for me to control my emotions. I wanted to be strong for her and not cry as I'm, you know, acknowledging to her that she is passing. She's transitioning. She's becoming an angel. She's moving on from this earth. And she gave me the exact same look that every single one of you gives me in transition. I... I will make a disclaimer to say unmedicated. I've seen the look a few times with a medicated birth, but when a mom is laboring unmedicated in transition from maiden to mother, it was goosebumps all over my body, y'all. It was the same look, the exact same look that each of you give to me or your partner in in the middle of this transition you're in another galaxy you're in another universe another dimension and you are holding on with your eye power where you can stare into someone's soul and silently asking am i okay is it going to be okay Am I safe? Is this normal? There is so much in the look of someone 
transitioning to motherhood and the hardest part of labor just before pushing and in that transition just before death. I did not know that. This is the first time that I had the gift of being with someone as they were leaving the earth. Even though I've been given the gift a thousand times of being with individuals as they bring life forward. And so I just held my abuela and told her how much she was loved. And I thought, what would I need to hear if I was dying right now? And I would need you to remind me of what it was like to become a mom. That moment where I met my babies for the first time and it just took my breath away that it's identical that the look it was identical the transformation and so spiritually many things have changed for me over the last 72 hours I mean, my faith reaffirmed my understanding of the connection of the cycle of life and death and being reborn and that we are so much more than this planet and gravity and pain and politics and suffering and anxiety and overwhelm from diseases and pandemics. That at the end of the day, there were no shoes on her feet. There were no clothes on her body. There were no belongings. The only thing in that room was the presence of people who she loved deeply and thus loved her back deeply. And what? helped her transition away from this earth was being with her children and being reminded of becoming a mom. So how crazy that all this happened and then like literally 10 minutes later, my phone rang and not one but two of my doula clients were in labor. Of course they were. Of course I was going to support life just as soon as I had to say goodbye to my abuela and support death because that is my calling. That is what God called me to do. And so yesterday, I believe, was completely designed to remind me about life and death and the things that are important in this world. It's pouring rain today. It's quite fitting, right? And as I scurried to these births, I saw everyone dodging the rain, angry faces, frustrated that they were wet, trying to avoid the pain of being wet, the uncomfortableness of rain. And then as I got further down the road, I saw all the joggers and I saw the people that embraced the rain and the wet and it, and they found the joy in it. And I thought, which type of person do I want to be? Who have I been acting as, as a friend, as a mother, as a co-parent, as a doula, as a sister. And I thought, I always want to be the person jogging in the rain. I don't want to ever be angry face person, afraid to get wet. And so I think my abuela is sending me lots of messages. And 
For that, I'm forever thankful. So I was able to go on today and attend two births. Both so different. One a scheduled C-section in the afternoon and one a quick precipitous labor with prom premature rupture of the membranes. Her contraction started within a few hours and she delivered within seven hours of her water breaking. First time mom, it was pretty fast. And I'm so thankful because within hours of my abuela passing, this mom was able to grab me in her unmedicated birth and look me in the eyes just like how my abuela just had. And I thought, this is the same. It is the same. And she was asking me with those eyes, Heidi, am I okay? Am I safe? Is this normal? Am I going to be okay? I'm transitioning right now from the person I was into mother. And the, and the sensations are unique. As my abuela passed, she shook and she locked eyes and she was in transition. And um, I guess I'll just leave it there, right? It was something new that I never knew and I never experienced. And um, it's my gift and my honor to share that with each of you today, who I'm privileged to have as listeners of my podcast. So I hope you make the best of Tuesday, 2 22 And if you're listening after that date, um, what a unique week, a week of palindromes. All right. See you soon. Hey, guys, I recently went disc golfing with my youngest son, Jagger, who, as I record this, is six years old. So that means four years ago, he was diagnosed with cerebral palsy from a birth injury. And I wanted to come to you with my story because I can't go backwards. So if you haven't listened to episode 88, where I talked to CEO Catherine Cross from Anja Health about cord blood and tissue banking. You see, her brother had cerebral palsy too. And we really bonded about how her brother and my child their lives could be completely different if they had access to stem cells from cord blood and tissue banking. When I was pregnant with Jagger, it was a simple question in a brochure like, hey, do you want to do public or private cord blood banking? And no one explained it to me. As I watched Jagger play disc golf and switch from his right hand to his left hand and watched him kind of limp through the course, I thought, I would have paid any amount of money to have had the opportunity to have my child have a stem cell transplant from cord blood that I had saved from his birth. $35 a month, and I may not be watching my kid have to switch arms on the disc golf course. So I hope you will go to AnjaHealth.com and consider cord blood and tissue banking because we just don't know. This policy that you have to decide on in advance, and we can't work backwards. If there's a birth injury, if your child has leukemia, or any of the other 85 diseases that are FDA approved, that stem cells from cord blood and tissue banking can help dramatically save or change your child's life.